Welcome to tonight's episode of the Merry Boozers RC Channel. Um, special show here tonight, guys. We've got the giveaway plane setting in front of us. We're kicking off a fun week for you guys. This is going to be Toss and Boss Week. I know technically on YouTube you shouldn't upload a video every day, but I don't care. This is more for you guys, and I thank you for us getting to a thousand subs. We're going to have a week of Boozer this week. So there'll be a new episode every single day starting right now. So you're going to get the live show today and then a new episode every day leading up to Sunday of next week. Um, it's been a, a surreal experience. Um, we're very, very thankful to be where we are now and to have gotten to a thousand already in the eight or nine months, whatever it is now. Um, I, if you had asked me <laughs> eight months ago how hard it is to get to a thousand, I would have told you yeah, it can't be that hard. And then after living it, I know that I've done it really quickly, but it's still, it, it was a challenge. Um, last week, a lot of guys said they couldn't see me very well. We've got some new stage lights tonight, so hopefully you can see us just fine now. Hello. So, face isn't dark anymore, hopefully. And I know we had the big white box on the table last week, and that probably was taken away from it a little bit, too. Or it was the white airplane, excuse me. Um, so, if you haven't already heard, the uh, giveaway plane for the boozers... Um, first giveaway. There'll be another one in a few weeks. I uh, can't give an exact day on it yet. Um, we're going to just kind of space them out a little bit. Um, but the first airplane is the Little Panther from Freewing. Lori, if you'll throw it up on there for them real quick. The uh, spec sheet. There we go. Spec price page. So they can see what they are be getting if they win this little airplane. Um, it's the Little Panther, 64 millimeter. And it's going to kind of go along with this week's theme. So this week is going to be Tossum and Bossum week. Um, it's going to be all hand launch airplanes. All uh, six episodes this week are going to be uh, hand launch airplanes. Leading up to Sunday night, which if everything goes right, we'll have a special guest next week coming on the show to talk about 64 millimeter planes and the Tossum Bossum series. And uh, we'll be giving this airplane away that night after I unbox it tonight and show y'all what you be getting. Um, hopefully everybody's having a good weekend. I had a good time over at the Pilot Lounge last night. We got to watch uh, Ryan unbox that new A-10. That was looking cool. Um, made it into the Dave's RC live show, uh, Toe the Line, on Friday. It's kind of becoming an a every week thing. Most of the guys that are in each of those all show up to each other's things, which is a lot of fun. Um, I, I've, like I said, just been loving what's been going on lately. It's been pretty awesome. We have any questions, Lori? I can see you looked at me for a second. Um, I just told you that hat is making a shadow on your face still. So you might... Well, I can lose the hat if you don't want the hat, or I can wear it like this, guys, if that's even better. I'm looking into the sun right now, so hopefully uh, it's not as dark. But here, I can take the hat off. That's fine. We'll put it over here in the corner. It'll look pretty. Look at that. Oh. So pretty. So pretty. Happy clouds. Happy clouds. I actually have a fun idea, speaking of happy clouds, for a video in the coming weeks. But I can't tell you. That would ruin the surprise. But anyway, guys, welcome in. We got quite a few guys in here by the look of it. I see uh, Love RC, Jeff's Custom RC, Deuce is Wild, David Hook. Um, I haven't seen you lately. Are you a new guy into our chat? Welcome if you are. If you're not, awesome. Yeah, lose Ryan's hat. <laughs> no, Ryan, it's my hat. I got the airplane. <laughs> Told you already. <laughs> I'm stealing it. <laughs> There you go, wear it backwards. There you go, Ryan can be the front guy, I can be the back. There you go. That's what she said. <laughs> um, anyway, it's been, it's been like I said, a really surreal uh, week this week, guys. We got to the 1,000 subs. Um, it's awesome. Our channel is officially under review. So hopefully in the next coming weeks we get to be in the partner program. We are an Opal channel now, I think is what it's called. I can't remember what the levels are, but 1,000 to 10,000 is, I think, Opal. And then it goes to Bronze, and then it goes to a Silver channel. And then you go to Gold Platinum, I think. I don't remember. Anyway, it's pretty cool. It's exciting. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. So I guess without further ado, let's uh, start getting into the box. 
Um, Lori, if you want to go top view for a second, we'll kind of start talking about how the plane came. All I've done is taken the uh, white box off of the outside. This one does not come with any graphics printed on the box. Um, but just for the ease of the unboxing, guys, I just took the sheet off. It's all I've done. Um, and I am going to actually spin around real quick and grab a knife. There's one. So I can cut the tape. Are we on top view, Lori? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, guys, let's start getting into it. I got to remember, I got to unbox it and then be able to put it right back in the box. So the little panther, here it is. First, you get the wing. And, and you know what? I actually really, really like the way this plane looks. And it's hard for me not to keep this one for myself because I've wanted this one for a long time. Um, oh, I need some scissors, too, to open the plastic with because i got to be able to put them back in the plastic. Here we go. Got a new chair, too. You like that? I don't know if the chair will work whenever uh, Papa comes, um, but we'll be trying it. You know, I've been thinking about uh, naming the Boozers live show between two props because I got the two props here. I don't know if you've noticed those in the background. Those are new, too. Um, I've had them for a long time, and I thought, man, they'd look really cool. So... It was kind of a funny play on words there. I'm not trying to take away from the other channel that has a between two somethings, but I thought it would be kind of a funny thing. Just an idea for a name. There we go. All right, let's get this wing out. And I may even pop a dot this live here on the channel tonight for you guys. Ta-da. Look at that. You know, it, it amazes me the paint jobs they're putting on these little 64 millimeter planes uh, now. They, I mean, they come really nice right out of the box. I won't be putting the servo horns on, or the servo pieces on. That'll be up to the new owner of this airplane. But just like last time, I will be painting it um, and Papa dotting it. And Lori and me will probably sign the inside of the canopy. Um, it'll be up to the new owner if they want to wait until Papa gets back so he can sign it. Or if they want to go on and get the airplane, we'll be willing to go on and ship it out for them. That'll be up to the uh, owner. You know, one thing I noticed on the Panther that's not on any of the other ones, these tip tanks actually are cladded in plastic on the bottom. So these are skids, which is kind of a neat little setup on this airplane. Huh, that's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to set that off to the side for a minute. We'll get the other wing out. You gotta stay up here on the shot. I move it back and forth for you. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I'm gonna come back over here where I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, don't cut any electronics <laughs> over there. So, did anybody get to fly anything fun this week? End, I should say. I put, uh, gosh, <laughs> 10 flights in this weekend. Filmed most of them. It was pretty awesome to get ready for this week. Lori says we have a question. I was told to ask you about the props. Where did they come from? Tell us about them. So, somebody asks, where did the props come from? We'll get right back to this in a second. Funny story, I used to be an airframe and power plant technician. That's what I actually went to school for. Um, and right after graduating, a friend of mine uh, flew a twin Merlin. Uh, if anybody knows what that is, it's kind of like a King Air. It's a turboprop twin engine uh, private plane. And these are the props off of that Merlin. I actually have a third one, too, and I have a hub where I can put them all together. And it's huge, but I just haven't ever put it all together and put it in here because I don't know how I'd get it in here. But uh, those actually came off of his airplane. He was getting new props because these got to where they were out of balance. If you look at them up close, which they're off camera right now, but they've got chips all up in them where they've hit rocks and stuff. And after years of service props either get resurfaced or they put new props on and it came out to where it was cheaper for them to put new props on and he said hey do you want these old props I, and i jumped all over that and was like yeah i want them i want them so that's where they came from just to answer that question all right top view we're gonna get this next wing out so here's the other wing guys Ta -da. Beautiful paint job, once again. I don't see any imperfections. You got the plastic. You know, it's neat, even on these 64 millimeters, let's see if you can see that, but they actually have nylon hinges, even on the 64s. That way? Yep. 
Okay, there we go. I'm getting used to it. I moved the camera today, guys, too, um, to where it's more in the center of the shot, so hopefully I can see that. But yeah, nylon hinged, so that's pretty cool. You don't just have to uh, rely on the foam anymore. That amazes me that they're even doing this on the little jets. So the quality from Freewing is just crazy to me. I've really wanted this airplane for a long time, but now I have to give it away to somebody else. Gosh. Ta-da. All right, let's see here. We'll get the canopy out next. Canopy does not come with plastic on it. It's one of the only pieces in here that did not have a piece over it to protect it, but it was in this big box all by itself, so I don't think it was going to get hurt. No pilot in this one, guys. There's the canopy. No, not a lot of frills on these. You are looking at a $98 airplane. Don't forget that. That's the, oops, half of the fun of all these little planes is uh, they don't cost a lot. Um, so these are good getting your feet wet in jets kind of thing. Um, I don't know how the Panther flies in comparison to like the MiG, but the MiG is super easy to fly um, and really stable, which you'll be seeing this week um, through the Toss and Boss series. So there's that part. Let's so see. I'm going to leave the stickers and the servo horns in the box, but I'll show them to you real quick. I'm not going to unbox these just because then they'll be ending up all over the place by the time it gets to the new owner. But if you get a wire harness in it, and all the normal uh, clevises and, and hard points for you. It does come with a sticker, which I'm not 100% sure where that's going to go, because it's already got a sticker on the wing. But it does come with it. And you get the normal tube of glue. This is a little different tube of glue than normal, actually. I'm sorry. This is an epoxy where you've got to mix a two-part together. I prefer, if you've got any of your other jets that you've already bought, the foam tack stuff that comes in the kit. Now, this stuff, if you put it on there, um, this plane will never come apart. Places will break all over this airplane other than where you glued. Because this epoxy stuff is strong. But I'm just a fan of uh, the foam tack that normally comes with the free wing planes. I'm going to put that back in the box for now. We've got the nose. I never knew that the nose actually had guns in it. Let's see. Am I in the middle? Forward, backwards, good? Yeah, you're good. Look at that. There's little guns in the nose of this thing, guys. Never noticed that in the pictures. And they're actually molded into the nose, too. I mean, it's pretty cool looking. You can see that. Huh, that's pretty cool. It's a plastic nose cone, too, so you're not going to have to worry about, you know, crumpling it or anything. That's nice. Captain Crouton's in here. Captain Crouton! Ricky, we love you or we wouldn't give you such a hard time. We've got the tail here. So, guys, let me go about how you're going to actually have to enter to win this. The uh, way you're going to enter to win this is come to our live show next weekend. And you have to be there to win this. We want you to subscribe. We want you to like our videos. This is a thank you to all of you guys that have been watching us for all this time as we've been getting this going. Um, but the way to win this is you will have to be live or in the live show next week. Huh, that's interesting. Um, oh, it's so you can put the control rod through it. That's interesting. Uh, sorry, I got sidetracked there as I was unboxing stuff. You will have to be in the live show next Sunday, 8 p.m. to win this airplane. There is not a pre-registration for this. As long as you're there, you've got a chance of winning this airplane. We're going to have a game that we're going to play. It will not include any kind of wheels. <laughs> little jab there. <laughs> um, I guess front for a second here while I'm talking. Um, but we're going to play a little game next Sunday on the live show to win this, but you have to be in the live show to win this airplane. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, guys. We're going to have another giveaway in the coming weeks. Um, I'll probably do that a more traditional style where we do a pre-register and win. Um, but this one's more for you guys that come by every week and are watching the show, and, and a big thank you to you guys for helping us get here. Um, I want to I want to make sure that you guys that are here every week are getting shown. So I will be promoting it, of course, but yeah, you've got to be live 
in the video on next Sunday to win this airplane. But anyway, let's get back to unboxing it. Top view. And uh, so it's interesting on this airplane. This piece is actually loose on it to where you can run the control rods through. Let's see, right there. You see that? So they leave it loose so you can get the control rods through it. That's pretty interesting how they did that. That little piece is going to glue back in there. Um, it looks like the tail actually glues on on this airplane too. It's not a screw together construction. Most of the 64s aren't. Um, let's see. Huh? Let's see. Huh? Cut that. And cut that. And let's get to. Oh wait! I almost went to the big part without finishing all the little parts. Shame. Shame. We got the tail. And I'm going to try and kind of press fit all this together so y'all can see what it looks like. Um, but I can't glue it together because i got to box it back up and ship it out to one of you. You know what I mean? So I can't glue it together, unfortunately. I'd love to fly it, but if I glue it all together, I can't get it back in the box to send back out to you guys. Alright, tail coming out for a minute. I got to remember not to crumple everything up and throw it off the side like I normally do too as far as the packaging goes. Like I said, nylon hinged. I mean, that is cool that they're doing this even on these little airplanes. That is really nice. Really nice. So no worries about that falling off. And the other one. Yep, nylon hinges again. Yep. For the price, I mean, these are great looking airplanes. All right, let's get to the part that everybody wants to see, the fuselage. Fuselage. Dun, 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 Boozer spinny circle thing. Or is it not loaded up? Uh. Just for funny. Dun, 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 dun. All right, here's what I'm going to do real quick before we take this out of the package. I'm going to move this one off the side. Because I know it helps the lighting not having that on the table. All right, here we go. You ready? Plastic's coming off. Da -da -da -da. Ooh. Ah. Yep. Typical free wing, a beautiful airplane. I'm going to take a sip of coffee real quick because my mouth is dry. Mm. Here's my on the front view. Oh, no, you are on the top view. Front view me real quick. Front view. You know what you need when you're building your Motion RC airplane is your Motion RC coffee cup. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plug, plug. No, not really. I'm not sponsored in any way. But it's fun to mess around. Um, anyway, top view again. Back to putting this airplane here out of the box. So let's get to the fuselage. Um, so you've got the control linkages coming through. Looks like they've already got the ends on them. Goes up into a single servo here that's going to operate your elevator. Um, the finish on this airplane, like I said, most free wing planes now just blow me away. It's going to look sweet with the papa dots on it um, you've got plastic all up underneath this plane so this one's not going to get tore up very easy it's got a little skid back here that's made out of plastic so when you're belly landing this one you're not going to have to worry near as much about tearing the bottom up on it i like that most of the new free wing uh 64 millimeter planes are being built like that actually let's see i'm gonna pop the canopy on real quick get that look going oops wrong way Goes in this way first. Woo! I'm some good magnets in this one. It's your pow! Put the nose on real quick. Like I said, I can't glue this together. Oh, the nose won't stay on with it by itself. Darn it, I have to glue it on. Okay. It is not a magnetic nose cone either. Eh, it's upside down like that. Anyway, I was trying to hold that. There's kind of the look of that. I'm not gluing it on because I gotta get it back in the box. But, if you want to see kind of the look of this thing, let's see here. Uh, let's see if I can slowly... 
piece. I don't know if I can slide all this together or not without tearing anything up. That's the only problem. Let's see. That's got to go in like that. Uh, it's like watching paint dry, guys. Putting an airplane together. Okay, it'll keel in. Uh, without doing this one, too, I'm just going to slide it in there for now. So you can kind of get the shapes of it. Huh? Try in here. Like I said, I'm just going to kind of piece it together here. Urgh. Not easy. This is not easy. But at least you can start kind of getting a look of it. Like I said, it's got to be glued together. It's just sitting here for now. Upside down. Hey, hey. I guess I'm telling you whoever gets it it's a nice easy airplane to put together if you can't tell that's it it just needs to all be glued together this piece would go in over here but I'm not gonna try and push it in so there's the look of it guys um, you can front view it you can top view it let them look around the airplane right now um, the nose won't stay on because it's not a magnetic nose cone you do have to glue this on um, which isn't a bad thing I'm just telling you that's just why it won't stay on there right now so the little 64 millimeter panther is one sweet looking little bird. I love the yellow on it. Um, the paint job is going to be really easy to see compared to a lot of the other ones. The lippy gets kind of hard to see from time to time being that it's that dark green if you get it very low. Um, Lori says we have another question. Explain how to enter for the giveaway again. You're entered right now. Anybody that's here right now, anybody that shows up between here and there, to enter for this giveaway, guys... You just need to be in the live show next Sunday night. We're going to do a little game in the middle of the show, and whoever wins it, wins it kind of deal. There's no stipulations to this at all other than you got to be there to win it. That's it. There's no going out and doing anything. I know most of the time, I'm not doing things the, the normal way of a YouTuber right now. I'm, I'm doing too many videos this week, and I'm... Uh, giving away an airplane without being like, you got to subscribe and do all this. We're going to do another airplane, and we'll do that. This one is really for you guys that have subscribed to us, been watching our content lately. Um, we, we really want to give back to our community. Um, so like I said, all you're going to have to do to win this one is be in our live show at the end of the week, Sunday, the next Sunday. This week we're just unboxing it, showing the airplane that we're going to be getting. We wanted to give you the rundown of the airplane since we had it here in front of us, you know. Um, I'm going to do the whole custom painting like I normally do where I weather it all up and everything. And for guys that are getting in late also, welcome to Toss and Boss Week. We were forgetting to tell you that too. So this is a special week as a thank you to all of you subscribers. We are going to do Toss and Boss Week where we have six videos going up this week one every day this week right in a row leading up to Sunday where we have a special guest that should be on the show as long as nothing bad goes on between now and then um, where we'll give away this airplane as the culmination of the whole week it'll be a lot of fun guys I really am excited for it you get to see the boozer a whole bunch this week um, it'll be a lot of fun question yeah, I know you said no stipulations but is this a continental US or is this going to be anywhere it'll probably be US and Canada if I go outside of the United States or Canada the shipping would be more than the airplane is worth um, I could maybe do something where I could do uh, if somebody wanted I would just have to buy a brand new one from Ocean RC and let it ship across the country or I mean across the world that way and that's kind of why I, I hate to say no to it because I don't want to be a mean person on that and I don't think we have a lot of people that watch us from other countries if there's anybody in here tonight that's from another country tell us right now but other than Canada I know that uh, what is it Chris Jackson I think um, is from Canada Lee Davis. Lee Davis Lee Davis is from Canada and I think we could make that happen if it came down to it 
Um, now, I don't think I could ship this to, you know, China or India or anything like that, but if you're, if you're from the continental United States or uh, uh, Canada, I can make that happen. So I would like to keep it in there, but we'll see what happens. If, if, if that happens, we'll cross that bridge when we do. I will make it right for whoever it is. Um, we'll cross that bridge if we get there. Um, I just want y'all to realize always that we are a small channel. We're doing this for fun. Um, and we want to give back to you guys as much as possible. Uh, but we also have to be realistic. I can't ship a hundred dollar airplane for a hundred dollars in shipping. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. So at that point, I might call Motion RC and tell them to give you a digital gift card, something like that. If, if somebody wins like that, let's do that. How's that sound guys? Fair? Fair to everybody? I hope so. So, anyway, the big deal to win to win the airplane, you got to be there Sunday. That's going to be the big thing. Um, like I said, we're not giving it away tonight because I still got to pop a dot it and I still got to pimp it out like always and airbrush it. But anyway, I'm, I've enjoyed doing the live giveaway things in the past, but as the channel gets bigger, it also gets harder because we're growing. I mean, I do know we have some people in Europe and stuff that watch us because I see the analytics. It's pretty neat. Uh, which I love the fact that, I mean, people in Europe are watching our stuff. That's crazy to me to think that somebody in Europe knows who a little guy from Florida is, but it's cool. Um, anyway, here's the little plane. Let's see, I got my pen here. How about we do some Papa Dots while we're sitting here talking for a minute? Woo! Plane falling over. Let's see. It's okay, it's somebody else's if I drop it, right? Yeah. Ha ha ha! Slide this over. So does anybody have any questions for the boozers tonight? Is there a oops, wrong one? Is there a certain 64 millimeter plane y'all been looking for? Like I said, I have a feeling this week a lot of people are going to get to see a lot of the planes that are offered right now. And let's get some dots going. Hopefully you're okay with this, whoever the new owner is. If you watch the Mary Boozers channel, you know we do this to our airplane, so. That's the cool part. If you don't like it, I'm sure there's somebody else in here that would love to own it. <laughs> but, can you see what I'm doing right now, or is my head right in the way? Um, not even on that screen yet. What? Oh. Not even on the top screen. There you go. Not on the top screen. Y'all see what I'm actually doing right now? Yeah. We've never actually pop a dot at an airplane since we got the new uh, setup, so hopefully you can actually see what I'm doing. But we're going to do some Papa Dotting tonight. I'm going to be doing some airbrushing on this airplane. Um, I wish that this pen had some more ink in it because it's not leaving dots. Well, it's not leaving dark dots. We have a question. Okay. What size is the ESC? I have no clue. I think it's a 60 amp. Good question. I think there's 60 amp in all these. Man, they put that front piece, that glue, or that uh, canopy is on there. I was trying to look at it. Would you know they didn't write it on it? I think it's a 60 amp in all these airplanes. Uh, it's on the product page. You've got the product page up, don't you? Oh, yeah, I can pull the product page up. There you go. I'll tell you what, Lori will look it up for you. Just because I can't tell right now, and I can't remember off the top of my head. But, anyway, that's kind of it. You're getting to see what I'm going to do to this airplane. i got to do the whole airplane like this, of course. And our lead Papa Dotter isn't here right now. He keeps taking trips to Maine and Massachusetts and all these other places and not hanging out with his baby boy anymore. But he'll be back here in a few more weeks. I know he's supposed to start making his trip back down here pretty shortly. He'll actually see what I'm doing there with the rivets, hopefully. Now I'm just going to come back down it and match it. Oops, poked a little hard. If you've ever done this, whoa, the dog just barked. Hush, no. Sorry, everybody. About the dog. Live show. Can you go stop the dog or yell at him or whatever? Wait, come here. Sorry, guys. It's part of the live show. Um, have y'all been enjoying our new thing where we've been bringing guests on the show live 
you know, last week, if anybody was able to come in and see it, sorry about the dog again. We had uh, Andy from RC Jetworks on the show. We also had Pilot Ryan stop in. It was a really neat show. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, I highly recommend it. This is like watching paint dry, isn't it? I'm only going to do this one wing tonight, guys, because... It doesn't say what size the ESC. It doesn't say the size of the ESC on the product page under specifications. Wingspan length, flying weight, power system. Power system? Brushless. Oh, it doesn't say it. All right, well, Lori's on Motion's website right now, and she can't find it. If anybody else knows the answer to the question on the ESC size. 30 amp speed control. 30 amp? Yeah. Okay, there you go, guys. It's a 30 amp speed controller on this airplane. Right, it took me too long to find that. We found it, finally. Like I said, I am not doing this whole airplane tonight, guys. It would take forever, and I think y'all would get bored to tears watching me do this. That, and I have a hard time talking and doing this at the same time, and that makes for boring shows. Uh, what size batteries does it take? Uh, 2200 3 cell LiPo battery is the type of battery this airplane flies on. Uh, most of the Toss and Boss series does. The only one that's the exception to it thus far that I have flown is the Lippish. I feel like the Lippish flies better on a 1500 um, for some reason, that lighter battery pack, the airplane just feels more responsive to me. Um, it will cartwheel over top of itself if you want it to, which you'll be seeing in this week's videos, because I'm going to fly the little lippy for you. All right, I'm going crazy trying to do this and talk to you guys at the same time, but you get what I'm going to do to the whole airplane. There you go. You see that? Uh, tilt it towards you just a smidge. Nope, that doesn't work. There we go. You can kind of see it. Kind of see it? There we go. So, putting the rivets on, we'll do the dirty streaks like always. Um, it'll be cool. But, nothing too crazy for this weekend show. Um, like I said, I, I've really enjoyed the support we've been getting lately. has been awesome. Trolls are trolls. You can't let them get you down. I'm trying to put the wing back on. Sort of, kind of. For looks... I can't believe we finally got a thousand subscribers. It feels like yesterday that we started the channel and we're already there. It just blows me away. You can go back to front if you're not already. Okay. Full frontal! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just crazy, guys. But I, I really do feel like we, we've changed a lot of stuff and, and provided you with some excellent content lately. I'm trying to get better about making sure we show battery placement and CG and, the, and all that kind of stuff because um, I know we've missed that in a lot of videos and guys have wished that we did that so in the future videos we're going to plan on doing that I can't remember if we did it in a lot of the toss and boss planes because the battery really only goes in one spot so as long as you're flying on a 2200 the CG is normally right on it um, there's not a lot of weight shift if you're not flying different size batteries. So all of my recommendations, except the Lippish, are going to be on a 2200. Um, that seems to be the sweet spot for all of these jets. Lori says we have another question. Uh, no carbon rod for the wings. Huh? Uh, it doesn't look like it, um, unless I missed it. No, no carbon spar in the wing. Really? No, it's got a hole for it. I missed it. Hang on. There's a hole for it. It's got to be in the box somewhere. Hmm, maybe not. I don't know. I'll have to check the destruction book, which is right here. Let's find that out, because I did not see one in the box. Do, 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 do. Huh. Looks like it doesn't have a carbon spar. Attach and hold the wings in place until the epoxy dries. Um, yeah, there's no picture of the carbon spar in the uh, product. Yep. Oh, but it does have optional wheels. So if you guys have been wanting to land it on wheels, it does. It looks like you've got an optional wheels. But no, there is no spar in the wing. That is interesting. Hmm. Huh. Carefully unwrap the parts. Yeah, no carbon spar in the wing. That is odd. Because if you look, let's see if I can do this without everything falling out. 
yeah, there's no hole for it. So I guess you just got to epoxy them on. At that point, I would tell you to sand your surfaces before you join these two. If you'll sand these things to make them roughed up, you know, sand all up in here. That's so weird because it does look like it could have a spar in there. Huh. Oh, no, that's for the wheel. Not for a spar. Hmm. Interesting. You know, I don't think the Lippish had a spar either. I don't think it did either. Uh, when I put it together. Uh, no, it has one. I have no idea. That is weird. Yeah, it doesn't have one, though. I've seen uh, the, the little panther fly at Joe Nall, though, and it never fell apart in the air or anything, so... you got to think you're a lot smaller airplane than they are with them bigger ones, too. But, yeah, um, you could definitely make a spar for it. Put it in that hole right there and stick it into the foam over there and have a spar, but... Nope. Hmm. That's wild. Anyway, what? I'm going to ask again, what's the prop blades off in the background? Oh, the props, they're off of a... a we answered that question earlier, but I'll answer it again. They're off of a twin Merlin. Um, like I said, I got it from a friend of mine that actually flew the airplane, and he was getting new props put on the airplane and asked me if I'd like to have them, and I said, heck yes, I would love to have them. All right, it just keeps falling apart. Um, anyway, it, it, it's been crazy, so... I, I just, I'm still just kind of in shock that we've we've made it to where we've been trying to get all all year, and it's it's awesome. I wish Papa was here to uh, kind of celebrate with us. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, Lori says we have another question. Uh, what does it have for structural attachment? Structure attachment. On this? Do you mean as far as gluing? I guess it's so. it's got two pieces that key in right here. They're in the uh, plane again. Let me show you here. Let me get back to you. Top view, sorry. Top view. All right. So it's got two little points here that go into the wing. And then, I mean, you put that epoxy on this thing all the way around it, make a good seal in there, and hold that wing on until it sets up. I mean, that is going to be strong. Now, I would be careful that you make sure you do this right. Sand this before you glue it because if you sand all of it and then put it together like i said this will key in here something like that it'll key in like that and you just got to hold it that epoxy sets off i think it's one minute epoxy and when it goes off it's going to hold that wing on there forever um, if you've ever dealt with it before i've dealt with it in some of the other kits the stuff doesn't let go um, not to say if you crash it straight into the ground, it'll let go, but, I mean, I had my lippish. You can't hardly tell here. I've been told it's top, called tongue and groove. Tongue and groove, yeah. My lippish is put together the same way right in here. It's just glued right there and right there. And these have, uh, they did fall off once. I'll take that back because I flew it straight into the ground at a nosedive, if you can see the end of it. Oops. Oops. Anyway. Phew. <laughs> so anyway, it's crazy right now, guys. Like I said, um, thank y'all all for making this possible for us, this 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 whole journey of YouTube and things and, and coming along for the ride, subscribing. Um, I do want to thank a couple guys real quick while we're, we're just sitting here kind of BSing for a minute. Um, Ryan, thank you so much for all the uh, uh, support and the help that you've given me over the last couple months. You know, uh, when I came into YouTube, I didn't know anything about it, and it's been very helpful having you kind of helping me along if you're still in the show tonight. Um, Dave's RC, we've had a lot of fun, buddy. I can't wait to get you on the show in the coming weeks. Um, we've got a lot of newer guys, too, that I'm trying to shout out, and I'm trying to put the airplane back together. There we go. Trying to talk and think of your sentences whenever you're trying to fumble with the airplane is always difficult. Um, but I want to thank Dave. He's been a lot of fun. Ryan, he's been a lot of fun. A um, couple shout-outs. Captain uh, Crouton Dexter, he's been a lot of fun. Um, he's not very much help, but he's a lot of fun. A little jab there. Um, 
anyway, it's 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 been cool. Jeff's Custom RC, he's one of the newer channels around, but he's been putting out some really cool stuff lately. I've been watching your stuff too, Jeff, when I've had time. Um, like I said, the, this is a real big thank you thing, guys, right now for you. Um, I'm really looking forward to Tossin' Boss Week. I hope you all really enjoy all the videos that we have planned this week. We worked really hard the last two days to get all six of those edited and up and titled and tagged and everything. So I really hope you're going to enjoy the videos throughout the week. He's from Texas. I thought you were from Chicago, Captain He's Photon. I'm from Texas. But you live in Chicago now, right? Anyway, it's been a ball. Uh, Lori, would you do me a favor? Would you fill that up with water now? The coffee's great, but it's not helping me much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, we filmed a video with Lori flying this week. And so you're going to get to see Lori flying, too. And I think here in a few weeks, we're going to get Lori to fly a jet. I think it's going to happen. Um, Kevin's got that new Arrows jet coming right now that uh, Ryan released this week on his channel. Why, thank you, my assistant, Lori. It's good to be the king. Oh, wait. I've got to put my product placement in the right direction. There we go. King! Um, anyway, so we've got uh, that video coming. I know a lot of guys have been really wanting to see Lori fly, so it's going to be cool getting to show y'all it. And, and I finally got to get behind the camera, and man, our new camera rig is so much better. It's just kind of heavy, but it's so much easier to keep the airplanes actually in shot now. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, back to what I was saying, Arrows just released that new Marlin that was on uh, Captain blah, 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 Pilot Ryan and Captain Mike. Sorry, guys. It's been a long weekend. And uh, I think we're going to get Lori to fly it when it gets here because, I mean, there's only one way to show off if it's really a good beginner airplane is to get the beginner to fly it, right? She can fly a Valiant. She can fly. She's flown a bunch of the, the trainery stuff, and I think she can handle it. You just got to remember that that throttle on the other side can slow it down. But uh, I think she can do it. She flies really well, guys. You'll see this week. She's got a flying wing that she rips the sky up with. And even if I take it off and hand her the controller and get her up high, she can kind of learn with it there. But... Uh, I'm in from Texas too. I was trying to check out the uh, live chat tonight too and see how that's going. Um, so are the new lights better, just out of curiosity guys, than the old lights? Y'all like this better or did you like our old light setup better? While we're asking questions. I can't have the guest every week so, you know, sometimes it's going to be different. Oh, I got the F-104 to unbox still. I'm all over the place tonight, sorry. <laughs> Oh, and then that's drink, remember? <laughs> oh, it's crazy. So, like I was saying earlier, anybody fly any new stuff this weekend? Um, I wanted to fly the new F-18 this weekend, but I've been a little nervous about flying it. It's still setting right over there. I've got to do the part two of the painting video. Um, but I've just... I'm, uh, I, I hate to say I'm, I'm worried about it, but it's, it's not that I'm worried about the flying abilities. There's just been a lot of issues lately. Ah, sippy cup. Lori's laughing off at me off screen because I keep holding that cup in front of me. Um, I think what I'm going to do on the F-18 is I've got the servo checker that I can run the servos with and I think I'm gonna have it just set it up on the table and go watch a show or something and let it run for 30 minutes just to make sure there's no issues because it sounds like maybe some guys have gotten some bad servos out of the box as I've been looking at forms and if I can catch that by running it for 30 minutes sitting on the table because I've used to do that to a lot of airplanes before I'd go fly them I'd set them on the table put the, the checker in there and just let it run the servos for 30 minutes and if one's going to die, it's going to die under that kind of load. Um, and then most of the planes that I ever did that to, I still have because they just don't ever quit working again. Um, 
I got out of the habit of doing it for a long time because we just didn't have any issues for forever on any airplanes. But with everything that's going on lately, I just want to make sure. So that's one way you can test them to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. I can't see it being the blue box because it's the same blue box that's in the L39, is in the F18, and the L39s are no problem. So I, I don't know. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now. It's crazy. Um, I'll be definitely watching to see what's going on. The good news is I know Ryan will inform us what is going on with his. And it'll be an interesting thing to kind of hear what happens. So that's the fun of us YouTube channels is you get to kind of come along with the issues with us and see what actually ends up happening. So it'll be cool. Um, Dave, I uh, got to see you fly your... Uh, um, what the heck is it? The silver plane, yellow stripes on it. F-86. Whew, I'm telling you, my brain tonight is just... But I got to see you fly your F-86 this week. It looked like you were flying the heck out of it um, and loving it. I love the F-86. Um, it flew awesome for me. Um, Dad's flew his a couple times. Um, I, it just ha it happens to everybody. I saw you came in and you didn't get your flaps out to get her slowed down in time. But... Um, You'll get it, man. Glue them back in. That's the the good thing about foam. Glue them wheels back in and keep going at it. Don't let it discourage you. Yes, ma'am. So a Greg Gardner says that he needs help setting high and low rates on his radio for his models. Wants to know if anybody can help with that. Um, it depends on Greg Gardner. Do you fly Spectrum or Tactic or Futaba? Because I fly Spectrum, I don't know anything about Futaba, and I don't know anything about, uh, what was the other one? Tactic. Um, but, Ryan probably could tell you anything you want to know about Futaba. Dave is, and I think Skip both do uh, Tactic. So, I mean, there's a lot of knowledge in this chat room right here, man. Um, the big thing is just knowing which one you got. Um, if you have a Spectrum radio, you can always reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you want to reach out to me in a private message, and I would be more than welcome to help you through your issue that you're having. It's part of the boozers. Is we, we really try and help out guys in uh, any of the issues that they're having when they've asked me. Um, as long as I have the airplane still or the ability of whatever you're asking me to do, I do it. I usually will. Um, it's part of it. It's what we're trying to be out here. So, anyway. Well, we had an interesting one. Wayne, um, when you were asking about... Taking the hat off. Did flew anything? Uh-huh. Wayne said he flew a surfboard. Wayne flew a surfboard? I did not get to see any videos of that. Were there videos, Wayne, of it? There are videos on YouTube of a flying surfboard. Well, I guess I need to check that out. You'll have to send us the link, Wayne. I know yeah, I've got you as link, a friend. Wayne. So, or I think Wayne's even a moderator. Yeah, good choice. Has anybody flown that new E-Flight Extra 300? Man, that one looks pretty sweet to me. Um, I know we don't normally do any kind of 3D planes here on the channel, but I love 3D stuff. It's just uh, I like scale better. But I, I've been really on the fence about actually buying that airplane and well, trying someone, it. Someone, someone flew it. Roof, roofness. Roof, roofness? I see you in the chats all the time. I don't know how to say your name. Ruffles, Ruffiness, 13... <laughs> It's something like that. I see you in everybody's chat all the time, um, but it looks like you've got it. It looks fun to me. I'd like to fly that one. Um, I got to fly the uh, 3D Tundra. No. The... It's not a Tundra. What's the one that E-Flight makes that's like that? I've, I've got one. What the heck's it called? Timber. It's, it's going, going down. It's going down. Anyway... <laughs> There's so many airplanes lately, it's hard to keep them all straight, too. Um, I flew the 3D Timber a few weeks back, and I wasn't super impressed with it. I kind of like the regular Timber or the Turbo Timber better to me. Um, it, it's When I'm flying a stall plane, I want it to kind of feel like a stall plane, and the uh, 3D Timber just didn't feel as good to me. It's not bad, don't get me wrong, but if I had to choose between the three airplanes, I would get the Turbo Timber right now. Personal opinion. Lori says we have another question. 
What is the objectively best 64 millimeter three cell flight line jet from Motion? Objectively, my favorite of all of the 64 millimeter airplanes is the MiG-15. Um, I've got a chance to fly all of them but the Thunder Chief now, but I have a feeling the Thunder Chief flies a lot like the uh, F-8 um, uh, does. Um, the MiG-15 is definitely my favorite flying airplane. And you'll get to see a video of it this week. Like I said, it's Toss and Boss week. I'm going to be putting videos up all week long of these throw em airplanes. But uh, if I had to just choose one of these... Now, I haven't flown the Panther, and I have a feeling it's going to fly really awesome. A lot of guys that I've talked to that have one said they absolutely love the Panther. But... Uh, of the ones I've flown, I've flown the F-86, I've flown the MiG, I've flown the Panther, I've flown the Lippish. I mean, not the Panther, the Crusader, the Lippish. Um, I think the only ones left are this one and the uh, uh, Thunder Chief. It's a fun series, guys, and, and if you get two or three of them, you're going to love, love the 64 miller plater planes. Even if you're a really experienced pilot, I mean, I fly a lot of stuff. I still enjoy the heck out of these because they're cheap enough that, you know, I'm not saying it's dirt cheap or anything, but $100 and you're getting the motor, the ESC, everything, take it out of the box, glue it together and go fly. That's pretty darn cheap in the RC world to have a scale looking jet that looks this good. Um, you don't have to worry about grass because you're throwing them. Um, and really... I don't have a gyro in any of them because they don't need it. Um, they all fly really stable, which blows me away, too. I wouldn't have thought that these little jets would be so stable, but they really are. Um, like I said, I'm excited for you guys to see all the videos this week because we've got the MiG and the, and the Crusader and the Lippish and all that. Um, I think the hardest one to fly to me is the Lippish, um, and it's not because... It's hard to fly, but it's hard to see that airplane to me. Um, I love the way it flies. Um, I seen I flew formation with James, and he had repainted his with invasion stripes and stuff on it. And his is a lot easier to see. Um, the paint job on the Lippish is really cool. Um, there's just something about that airplane that's hard to keep orientation with for me, though. And, I mean, that could be different for every person. Once again, that's just personal preference. Um, I know this bright yellow airplane is going to be easy to see. George had repainted his lippish yellow with uh, the tiger stripes all over it. And, I mean, you could see that one really easy. Um, but it flies good. It's a, it's a hard choice, but like I said, if I had to pick only one of these airplanes to go out and buy right now, I'd go buy another MiG tomorrow. That airplane flies phenomenal, 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 phenomenal. I can't get it across to you enough. Um, it's just, it's a ball. I have put a ton of flights on it. Um, and the other funny thing is we have a Geotex runway. And with any of these little toss and boss em planes, I put plastic across the bottom here. It's just that regular boxing, or box tape, boxing, box tape. Um, and you can see there's a black street here. Top view for a second. This is where I hit the runway with it. Um, because I'll do low passes out there. And uh, sometimes I get a little too low and I tie the record for the low pass. And it's funny because these things will just kind of skip off the runway. They don't really tear them up. And now if you hit a uh, asphalt runway, you're going to tear it up pretty bad. But uh, that's where I've oopsied and touched a couple too many times. But they're a ball, man. It just looks like oil streaks. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how do you launch your F-86? Uh, someone said you can't get it in the ground or in the air for anything. It just settles into the ground every time. On his F-86 Sabre for the tossing bosses. Um, well, I don't have it anymore, unfortunately. Um, my father decided to get rid of that one for me um, <laughs> at Joe Nall by nose diving it into the runway. <laughs> I mean, he splattered that airplane too. But uh, I, I throw it just like the Mig and. Now, I flew, let's see, did I fly that one on a 2200 or did I do the 1500 in that one too? I think I had a 2200. I think it was 22. Yeah, and you threw it too. Yeah. And uh, Just throw it like now, I will say, guys, we are at sea level, and I don't know 
how these planes fly if you're up in the mountains like I know a lot of you guys could be from a lot higher elevation place you know we're at zero altitude here in Florida and so jets perform better here than they do say in Utah or anywhere else where you're 3,000 feet up uh, AGL um, so you got to look at that too on these little planes is I've never seen one fly up there, but I know a lot of the airplanes fly better here in Florida than they do in other places because we're so close to sea level. Um, you know, stock fan on my T-45 Goshawk from Freewing, um, I'm getting 137 miles an hour on that airplane because we radared it. Um, which is ballistic fast for a stock setup, but the same airplane in Utah is probably only going to do 110, 112 miles an hour because it doesn't have as much air to grab and throw through that fan. So something to think about on that is, is your altitude. But to answer you, I think we had that one just set up with the 2200... Uh, right pushed up to the nose. I remember that. We had it pushed all the way to the nose and you don't throw these airplanes straight up. A lot of people mess up when they throw it and they throw it at an angle like this. When you launch these... Almost like a 45. Not even a 45. 45. You want to throw these out at an angle like this. A lot of guys throw them like this and the plane goes up and stalls and then it comes down. You want a good hard throw. The other thing I would say is find a friend to help you throw these airplanes. If you've got your wife, whoever, go outside, get you a foam glider, make a paper airplane, whatever. Te practice throwing it straight, first of all, and not a football. You want it to go flat out. But these little 64s don't need you to chunk them stupid hard. Um, I mean, it's just a normal throw, and you want to go, I mean, straight straight out at probably a, I don't know what you'd call that angle. It's not a 45 because 45 would be up here. Probably be like 25, 30 degrees, but about like that is the throwing angle that you want. And they'll fly right out nice and stable. I mean, you'll see it this week. Um, I uh, had gotten stupid confident with the F-15. The F-15's got the safe in it and I'd been throwing it and kicking it off my shoe and stuff and of course the one flight we go to film with it I put it at half throttle instead of full throttle and I went to throw it and the thing went and about pancaked again it, I've got it to where I can hand launch it every time no problem on that airplane but I forgot to do that this time of course when the cameras were rolling and we'd been flying all day so I said forget it we're just gonna use that one because the rest of the flight was awesome but hopefully I enter air uh, answered your question about that airplane um, like I said next week when y'all see the uh, little panther again she's gonna be all papa dotted and pimped I know that our unboxings usually take a little longer than this but with these small airplanes it's five parts doesn't take that long to unbox these um, I probably won't go live with the airbrushing on this one just because I gotta get it done before next weekend and there's already six videos coming out this week so Right, throw it like you want it to fly if there were no power and you were going for distance. There you go. Anyway, um, I haven't seen that you had to kill any of them, but throw it out at a, at a good angle like this, not up. Because if you go up, the plane just goes like this and they do this weird stall and come right in. You, you don't want that. Um, anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Um... Is that ready to fly or bang to fly? This is a uh, plug and play if that's what you guys are asking. Anyway, I'm trying to keep up with all the comments. It's not working. Lori's definitely watching as always. Uh, is there any other questions about the airplane tonight? Don't get your fingers caught in the cheater vents. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, a lot of these don't have cheaters you know that's one of the funny thing on these 64s like the mig it doesn't have a cheater vent on it um it's just right in the front right out the back now i will say i think the big is not very scale as far as the size of its intake but uh 
it looks good. If you you can't tell from over that far, but my, my MIG is a little squished up here in the front. It's been flown a bunch. Um, this one, it, for the hardest one of them to fly, I would say it's probably this one right here, or, or the Thunder Chief. Um, the Crusader, it's interesting the way they did the flap and elevator setup, or the, not, not flap, but the, uh, the aileron and elevator move together. Um, and it has very, very wide turning circles. Um, it's not going to turn on a dime for you. Um, but it is extremely stable still. But it takes a little bit of getting used to if you've flown these other ones. Um, they turn on a dime, whereas this one wants big turning circles, and you got to get used to that at first. Um, it's a little weird setup, too, like I said, with with these move up at the same time and down at the same time, which is kind of weird, but uh, the airplane itself is beautiful. This is probably the best looking one in the series, um, but I still think the MiG flies the best in my opinion. If you can see the Lippish, it flies great, um, but you wanted my honest opinion. If I could only have one, I'd buy that one right there. Yes, ma'am. Does it come with the optional landing gear, or is that separate? It does not come with the gear. I did not see them in there. Yep. They are sold separately, and Lori can give us a price here in just a second. Looks like 1050, 1049. 10.49. You can have the wheels, though. That's, oh, that's ten dollars and forty-nine cents. Sorry, that's the F9F. Oops, wrong one. It's probably, it's probably the same wheels. Similar. It has a nose steering wheel, though, so that could be the only difference. Hang on. Laurie's looking it up right now. We'll tell you how much they are, though. They're not going to be very much. It's two it's wires. Price. How much is it? $10.49. $10 it's the same price for both airplanes, so there you go. It wouldn't take much to upgrade it. And if you didn't want to hand toss, uh, you can, by all means, put the wheels on it and fly it off of your hard surfaces. Um, it won't probably be able to take off in grass. So if you have a grass field, you're definitely going to want to be hand-tossing this airplane. Um, and like I said, I've been hand-tossing all mine and haven't really had any issues. They, they, they do really well. Um, I don't have a gyro in any of mine. I don't feel that they ne need one. Um, and once again, these are cheap enough airplanes if you're transitioning into flying jets that if you mess up and crash it, you got $100 in the airplane, not three four hundred dollars you can buy three of these for the price of one normal jet so this would be a good way to start warming you up put the gear on it if you've got a hard surface and get used to flying jets there you go these fly like the big ones i mean there's there's they don't fly as good as the big ones um, that's why everybody wants to go bigger usually but uh they still fly really well for what they are yes ma'am um can you add a nose wheel servo with the kit Yes. Um, it looks like it comes it look, with it. I think it comes with it in the kit. From what I was seeing in the book here a second ago. Whoops. It looks like it comes with it. If you buy Are you the on the website? The yeah. option? Yeah. If here. You buy the optional, Top view me like for a second because it actually shows it in the manual. Let me find it real quick, guys. I could probably throw that page up here. There you go. Lori, I'll just throw it up there for you. Show you the optional retract. And it shows you in the manual how to put them in. The optional gear. You pull. Uh, I gotta take everything off for a second to show you this. But if you're interested in doing it, I'm gonna take this stuff off so I don't accidentally just end up dropping everything. But to put it on top of you still? Yes. Alright, so to put the optional gear in, this plastic piece here pulls off and then it has a receiving point in it, which is. What, what, uh-oh. Oh, never mind. Okay. So after you pull that out, let's see if you can see that right there, but after you pull it out, there's a place to put the uh, servo in right there. And it comes with that little servo mountain bracket and everything by the look of it. When we looked at the kit for $10.49 off of Motion RC's website, which Lori is in the process of linking for you blah, 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 as we speak. Uh, it looks like it's froze. It's it's gonna catch back up to the other Whew. There we go. 
make sure the panther is nose heavy the cg is way off in the book is what somebody says you know with all the 64 millimeters on a 2200 i've put the battery in the front as far as i can in all of them and i've never had an issue so with this one i would probably start with that battery right there i mean setting in there all the way as forward as i could um nose heavy is always better than tail heavy i don't care if anybody tells you different than that they don't know how to fly for one thing because they're going to crash a lot of stuff but nose heavy is always good if you've watched our video of the f-35 i actually started nose heavy on that for the first flight and now that i've flown it a couple times i started moving the battery but i actually got it tail heavy once and if you get that f-35 tail heavy I mean, I was just, I'd moved it back. It was sweet. It was sweet. It was sweet. And I got it just too far back and it was, oh my God, it's out of control. Um, we got it down safely, but if you, it, it, it is sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh my God, I missed it by that much. You are going to have a hell of a time landing that F-35 if you get it tail heavy. So a little forewarning, it feels really good. It feels really good as you're moving it back. Um, but be careful. The, where that plastic part is on the F-35. Um, so you've, if, if, if you were looking at the wing on the F-35, are we on the top still or are we on the front? We are on the front. I can top me for a second. On the F-35 where the wing mounts, this isn't the F-35 and I don't have it right here to show you, but there's a plastic piece that's like right here um, that's like a mounting point on the F-35. The tip of that plastic piece is actually where I CG mine at now like right on that front edge of the plastic piece. If you know what I'm talking about, if you guys have one. Anyway, um, I plan on shooting another video of it here in a few weeks. Um, we've got so much other stuff going right now, it probably won't be for a little bit. But uh, I do plan on shooting another video on, on my final resting place of my uh, CG location now that I've flown the airplane about 20 flights. Um, give you all the final update on it. Same thing with, you know, it's a funny one too. I've been flying that Freewing F-16. I've been flying it a ton now. I flew the E-Flight a whole bunch. And now I've flown the uh, uh, Freewing F-16 a whole bunch too. And, you know, I'm back on the fence. I, I just, now with the upgrades that come out of the box on that airplane, it's, it's really a toss-up between either one of those. Um, I really like the way the Arctic camo looks in the air. A little better than the Thunderbirds after flying them um, and I've got it to where that uh, F-16 of free wings I can get it to crawl in a in a high alpha now so I, I don't know I'm gonna be doing more videos of all of them of course but I, I think if I were in the market for a 70 some people might disagree with me I would buy the Freewing F-16 over the F-35 right now. Um, don't shoot the Messenger. I've been flying them both a whole bunch lately, and I think the F-16 flies just a little bit better to me. Um, it's a little easier um, when you get it into high alpha. Man, those wings don't rock at all. I, I, I have a gyro in the F-16, and I haven't used it in the past 10 flights. I turned it off. Don't ever even think about needing it. Um, it's so stable that it really didn't need the gyro. We put it in there because we had the receiver, and I just decided to turn it on. But we've been turning it off lately and not even using it. So I know we were talking about the Panther, and we've got off subject, but that's part of the show. When we don't have a guest or an agenda, this is what you get, right? Hey, Laura, hand me that new stand, too. It's right behind you. I want to show these guys the stand. Y'all wanted to see the sweetest airplane stand I have ever seen. No offense. I know that I, I love my cruising stand too, but this is so cool. I gotta move the chair out of the way to show you this. Check out this airplane stand. So we got that HSD Super Viper. We needed a real airplane stand for it. The cruising stand is a little small for that gigantic airplane. So this is the HSD stand. Check this thing out. So you, you spread it out. You lock it in when you're at the field. You might put it up on the table so you can I mean, eh, let's see. Eh. Something like that, but it, it opens up into an X and then it tightens up. I don't have a big airplane sitting here right now, but like, mm. <laughs> I don't have a big airplane sitting here, but if you, you, you get the point. It just sets in there like that and bam, 
you're at the field. You know how handy it is to have a stand that's right here and you don't got to have a table or anything? I'm in love with the stand and they're on sale right now for $64. I think they're still on sale. Um, but if you've been looking for a stand for at the field, man, this is so convenient. Look at that. Um, FMS makes the same stand. This is just the HSD one to match the HSD airplane. But uh, FMS.com has these also. I don't know if they're still on sale from there. Um, I don't remember if Sean has these on his website. Or not Sean, uh, Andy from RC Jetworks. There's lots of places you can get them. Look around. They're all branded to every company. I'm just honest. You can get these everywhere, but I finally got one. And I mean, that thing is awesome. I'm probably out of screen right there. This is hard. It's big. But I mean, it's I mean it's sturdy. You can put your airplane on it. You can work on your airplane. I mean, look how convenient this is. I can set my thing there. I mean, this is a little airplane. You can imagine a big one on here, too. It's just convenient. Everything's right here where you can... Uh, here, i got to take this battery out since I'm here. <coughs> but at the field, man, it sets up like that. And then you're, you're not trying to bend over to put your batteries in or anything else. It's right up here where it's convenient. Battery's stuck in there. There we go. Um... And it really holds anything I've put in it, it holds really well from all these different sizes. You just saw me put a 64 millimeter in it. And, uh, it, just to show you, grab another airplane real quick. I got a free airplane today. Oh, bonk. Look at that. I know this isn't a toss and boss, but, I mean, see that? I mean, I just grab it, it goes right in here. Got this airplane today free. Gonna love it. It's been oopsed. We're gonna be doing some repair videos on this eventually. Um, it's the old Durafly P40. I have three of these right now. Two of them are, one's in really good shape. I got the crashed one. I've got an extra set of wings. I've got an extra fuselage. I'm like the, uh, the uh, only guy collecting the uh, Durafly P40. It's not a very easy airplane to fly, but it was one of the prettiest ones they ever made. The FMS P40 flies way easier. I know I'm off subject again, but I don't care. If you uh, are wanting a P40, the 1450 millimeter FMS P40 is the P40 to get. Ryan, if you're still in here, I know you'll back me up on this. The FMS P40 is the P40 to own. Of all of them, uh, I liked the nose on this one. If you're not scared of this airplane, it's pretty, but it's kind of small. Um, and it has some really bad ground handling tendencies on this airplane. Um, and it has a wicked high speed stall on this airplane. So the way this one actually died, um, I got it set up really well for one of the club members. And he was doing a loop with it. And the top of the loop, it snapped. And it went into a flat spin that it would not come out of. And it went all the way in. Like that. And this had a gyro in it that was helping it. Even the gyro couldn't save this one. So, I mean, you really got to be careful with this one. If you get the chance to buy a Durafly P40, make sure your skills are definitely up to snuff. Because this was one of their hardest airplanes, in my opinion, this is probably one of the hardest airplanes to fly I've flown all year. I mean, I've been flying jets all year. They're a lot easier than flying this thing. This is, is a hard airplane to fly. I saw three of these at Joe Nall. They're kind of rare. All three of them I saw fly, I saw a crash that week. So, to tell you how it is. So, it's not for everybody. I mean, it's funny, though. Um, like I said... I just keep ending up with them. It's funny. People just keep giving them to me. Look at that. <laughs> Here, wait. Let me get another one. <laughs> this one's still in the box. <laughs> Got enough P40s on the screen right now? Can you tell I like P40s? I love the way they look. It's half the fun. You know the other neat thing about this airplane? 
I know it's discontinued, and, and like I said, it's not the best fly and It actually had a magnetic bomb on it, which was kind of cool. Um, the retracts were terrible in this airplane. It's got E-Flight retracts in both of these now, and they've been holding up really well. Um, anyway. Funny, I know. You'll see it fly some more. There's actually a video of us flying this plane on the channel. And I think even in the video, I go running off the runway with the time I flew it. Um, but it'll be coming. Sorry to be running in and out again. That was the uh, easiest plane to grab right then. But anyway, the stand, like I said, you get done with your day of flying. You unscrew it. You pop it. And you're ready to go. Isn't that nice? Love this stand. Now, I usually, this is what I've been taking to the field with me when I'm here at the house. I usually use this stand on the workbench now. This is my cruise in stand. You guys have seen them before, I'm sure. Um, but some of you guys might not have seen it. I'm all over the place tonight, I know. Oh, Lori's got a question. I'll come back to this in a second. Well, we've got a bunch of people that have just popped in recently. Talk about the giveaway one more time. Okay. How to get into it, what to right. do. So, guys, this one, I'm going to come back in here and sit down again. The giveaway this week is the Panther. If you missed the unboxing, you can always check it on the replay. It was right from the beginning unboxing it. Now we're just kind of BSing, but a little water, I was getting dry again. Uh, on the Panther, if you're just getting in here, come to the live show next Sunday. 8 p.m. We're going to actually give this airplane away. Tonight we were unboxing it, showing we what the airplane was and what you were getting. Um, we're going to be riveting and painting it this week. This week, all week long on the Mary Boozer channel is Toss and Boss Week. We're going to have a new video every day this week showing off the Toss and Boss them airplanes. Um, and they aren't all motion RC airplanes. Just going to give you that heads up. Uh, one of them's an E-Flight. One of them's a Park Zone. Funny enough. One of them's a flight test. One of them's a flight test plane that Miss Lori built herself and has been flying lately. Um, we've got all the ones you see behind me. Um, it's going to be a real fun week. But the big thing right now is next week we're going to play a little game for uh, the Panther. We're going to give it away right here while we're BSing just like this with uh, our special guest that's hopefully on next Sunday if, if everything goes good, like I said, and there's no issues, because um, things can happen on a live show and, and an event like that. Um, if he has any kind of family issues or whatever and can't make it, it happens. But we do have a special guest that I really hope is going to be there um, to discuss the Tossum and Bossum airplanes. Um, and we will give the airplane away live there on the show with a little game show. So. The big thing right now is you just have to be there to win it. Next week, next Sunday, the 21st, I think, is going to be the actual giveaway date. So tonight, like I said, we were just going through the airplane, showing it off, um, and then just kind of hanging out. So, And then I've been talking about random stuff. So if you want to talk about some random RC-related stuff, this is a good place to be tonight. We're just kind of having fun and messing around. So... I was just talking about my HSD stand for the guys that saw that here at the house, what I usually use for a stand. I'm going to pull the wings off of this again, and it's probably going to be too small of an airplane to fit it now that I'm trying to show off the stand. It'll be funny, right? Let's see if it fits. But, you know, for my 2200 millimeter size airplanes, this stand is perfect. Now yeah, it fits. There you go. So this is great here at the bench. You can set your airplane on it. You can be working on it, flip it over, however you want to do it. And I really like the cruise end stand. Um, the other thing I really like on the cruise end stand is when you go to CG it, your airplane, you put these in like this. And I don't know where the CG is going to be with no wings or anything, but you can set the airplane on here. For finding the CG though. See if I can get it. Sometimes I can get it to stand right up. But that's how I check my CG on my planes. Now that I've got my cruise end stand, is with this you can just, like I said, set it on there. 
There's no wings on this airplane. You can do it upside down or right side up. There you go. There you go. And that's where my CG is with it. So it's really nice, even at the field, if you take your cruise in stand out there, you can CG your airplane right on the spot. But ta -da, I should have probably put it sideways so you can actually see it setting up there. But there you go. So you can see how it actually works right there on the spot. Um, it's got a little magnetic tray and then these big rubber bumpers on here they, and they don't let it get tore up. Same thing with on this. These are big old rubber pads at the top so no worries about damaging your airplanes. I wouldn't use these for an airplane that's over probably five pounds, six pounds. I think you might end up denting your phone. But uh, I like it and, and actually for that airplane I probably would have put them in from the other direction. Because it actually has little rubber pads on the other side too, and it's a lot smaller. But anyway, kind of what's going on there. Well, guys, I hope y'all have enjoyed the show tonight. Um, we got the Panther out of the box, showed you around a little bit. We're starting off tossing boss week. I'm really excited for it. Um, I, I, I'm so excited that we hit the thousand subs. Uh, I, I just can't wait to see what's going to happen next on this channel. It's it's been a fun ride guys. Lori says we got another question real quick. Uh, where can you get the cruise in stand? Uh, it's cruiseinstand.com I believe. Can some... cruise in Is it cruiseinstand.com? Somebody throw the link in. I know a lot of people still have that link um, from when we were talking about it all the time but please send the link in and I will go in and put the link to cruise in stand uh, in after the show too. It might actually be wrote on the stand. C R E W Z I N N Cruzen dot com. Um, it's an awesome stand too. They're uh, actually made out of aluminum, wood construction. I believe they're made right here in America. America. Um, it's awesome. Yes, ma'am. This is from earlier, um, but I never got to ask it to you. Do you have a receiver preferences with the Spectrum transmitter? Do I have a receiver preference on DSM protocol? Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, I prefer the AR6210. Right? <laughs> Hang on, let me grab one. I think it's a 6210. Yeah, this is an AR500 and this is the wrong receiver. That's not what I usually use. Um, I usually use the AR6210 with a satellite, so it's got the one satellite that I can mount sideways and it's got the other one that I mount down, um, but that's the kind of go-to receiver for me. I think they're like $25 on Amazon normally. Um, here lately I've been flying the Admiral Gyro uh, receiver all-in-one combo and I've been really liking that. Um, anyway, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, you want to come talk to the wonderful audience for just a minute? Not really. Please. Oh. Laurie's going to come talk to you for a second because i got to go to the potty. I don't like talking. You can talk to him for just a minute. Oh, God. Hi, guys. Um, so I can't really see anything right now, so I'm just going to try to read. I don't know what's up. <laughs> um, yeah. Awkward for me. Uh, sorry. Uh, you can do it, Lauren, you're all right, you're quiet. He says I need to tell you about my flying, so um sure. Uh let's see, I started off flying a slow stick and then I worked my way up into a valiant and now I'm flying my little flying wing pizza box thing and it, it, I'm getting there not sure if I'm doing good or not but yeah it's working I haven't really destroyed anything yet I have crashed a couple of times um, kind of broke my wing in half but we glued it back together it was good uh yeah so that's about it for me <laughs> oh man he's still in there <laughs> um, 
Yeah, Dennis, I'm kind of excited to fly a jet. I'm very nervous. Uh, something totally different than what I've flown before, so... Yeah. Uh, the last plane I flew was the wing, and you'll see it up uh, this coming week. Um, did it for the Toss and Boss week. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it looks good, guys. I don't know. I was very nervous, and you'll get to see my tongue hanging out a little bit, because I concentrate way too hard, so... Oh, he's back. Okay, I can go in now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes duty calls, and you gotta answer. I haven't been feeling the greatest today. <laughs> Does Wes's sweet sweats. sweats match his pink shirt? No, they don't right now. Funny enough, I do have a hat that matches my shirt. Let's hear about it. So, Lori, they were wanting to know what was the last airplane you flew, and I know the answer, but do I you? Do oh, okay. Sorry, she's been going through it already. Uh -huh. Lori does look better than Wes, doesn't she? I know. We really do need to get Lori on either, like, the little F-15 or the Viper. Something with safe in it so you can feel comfortable. Um, I think she could fly them, guys. I really do. As good as she's been flying lately, I really, really do think she could fly one of them. Um, and like I said, you're going to see some of the Toss and Boss stuff this week. And there is a video of her flying her pizza box plane. And I think she's really ready to kind of move up. Um, I know moving up to a jet's probably not the right thing to do. But it'll be really fun to have her fly one. So I think we're going to do it either way. Something, whether it's a 64 millimeter, whatever. We got all these airplanes. Um, sometimes you just got to say, if it happens, it happens, let her fly it. You know, that's half of the fun of this. I'm the luckiest guy on the planet because my wife helps me with these videos. She helps me with all these RC planes and then she flies. Uh, and she doesn't complain when I come home. Well, I was going to say she doesn't complain when I come home with a new airplane, but sometimes. <clears throat> Yeah, sometimes she does, but I, I don't come home with near as many of them lately as I used to. Um, you know, this year I've only really bought that uh, uh, F-104 Starfighter. I think that's the only airplane I bought for myself. Um, we bought two airplanes for the channel to give away, but uh, I had to slow down a little bit after uh, changing jobs on what airplanes I've been buying. Are you going to be filming the painting of the panther? I wanted to. We but might could do like a short live of the quick. Um, yeah, I could probably do a live one day this week. We already have six videos. We've got a video for every single day this week. So um, I don't know about doing a live on top of all that other stuff. There's already so much content going up this week that it might be hard to do a film of that, but we'll see how it goes. Like I said, this week is more just for you guys that come every week and see our show every week and stuff. We're, we're just going to have fun and post a bunch of videos this week. I don't care if YouTube likes it or not. That's what we want to do. So I care more about you guys than I do about that. So... We got to a thousand. Yeah. I've been asked if I like flying the Valiants. Uh, yes, I do like you the Come Valiants. over here. Come on. Come over here and talk to the guys for a minute. I'm going to make her not like me for a minute, but she's going to come sit here while we're BSing. We got the comment section here. We'll be all right. We'll make it. Um, no, Lori's always behind the camera. I'd rather be here with us tonight. Oops, I'm killing an airplane right now. Oh, you're destroying it. It's a rental. Uh there we go. Look at that. We've got our comment section. You get both of us tonight. Should have dressed up. Gosh. I'm wearing my serpent heck? shirt. She I'm got wearing. her serpent shirt. So, anyway. The um, question is, is, does she like the Valiant? Yes, I do like flying the Valiant. I like that it has that safe mode in it for if I get myself in trouble. But you can also turn it off so you can, you know, up, up your skills a little bit. Play with it. See how fast you can go. What kind of tricks you can do. I don't know. She's, she's been getting better. She's gotten a lot more confident. You know, at first she would never do a, a roll or anything. And now Didn't she's gotten... Didn't even like a, doing loops. She's gotten a lot more confident. She's been doing some rolls and loops and stuff lately. Um, she's getting to where her landings are good. Um, it took her a little while to get used to flaring the airplane instead of just crashing it into the runway, which I see a lot of guys have a hard time with that. And that was one of the things that I wanted to break her of as fast as possible 
So that was something we worked on a lot right in the beginning is uh, flaring the airplane correctly for landing. Um, because if you can get your flare down to where you come in and, and it's a gentle landing, you're never going to tear up the retracts. Um, but if you come in like this, I see a lot of guys that come in and bounce them in like that. Um, that's when you really start tearing stuff up. So if you can get used to coming in, holding that airspeed off, holding it, and I get it real close to the ground, and it'll just leak real gentle, that's when you don't tear them up. So that was one of the very first things we really worked hard on. And you flew that flight test old speedster for a long time. I did fly this. I forgot so, about that one. When we got back into the RC airplane thing, we weren't even dreaming of jets. I mean, oh my God. We, we thought, uh, you know, it'd be real fun to get back into some RC planes. I used to love it. And uh, so I started building, funny enough, the uh, flight test planes is how I kind of got back into this. Actually, that reminds me, my first plane was the flight test zero. <laughs> No, it wasn't. A, it wasn't it flight was, test. I scratch built that oh, just scratch off built of another. Zero. I made a uh, the old profile planes that I remember doing that forever ago, and we used to dogfight them. And I cut out a zero and glued it together as you know just the profile. And we went out and flew that. And I said, "Here, Lori, fly it." And she flew that because if it crashed, I could make another one for nothing. I think. No, I gave that airplane away. I, I had it for a long time. I do still have the very first airplane. From when I got back into the hobby, it's sitting in that closet in there, but yeah. it, it's not that important right now. It's one of those uh, profile yaks, uh, 3D planes. That was the first one when I got back into the hobby that I had. Uh, one of the guys at the club was like, hey man, if you'll come out here and fly with this, I mean, give me 50 bucks, you can have my airplane, come fly. Um, so I gave him 50 bucks, got the airplane, bought myself a transmitter. Um, which was it was a dx was it the six or did i have the i first i can't remember did i buy that dx6 up there I think first it was the six. okay so i had the dx6e was my first radio when i got back into the hobby and then anyway so we did the flight test things for a little while and then Lori decided she wanted to start flying so i got you that dx8 it's uh, somewhere around here. I don't know where it is, but the DX-8, it, it's probably on our flight box because she flew this week. But uh, she got the DX-8 from a swap meet. I paid 100 bucks for that. And then we had fun for the first while building them together. Yeah, we did that. that uh, we did the Dusty. The yeah, we did uh, the duster. They had the little flight test duster. And I cartwheeled that one across the. We we painted it. All, I painted it all up for her to look just like Dusty from the movie uh, Planes, and I still have it in there. Yeah. I could put it back together. I want to fly that one again. Yeah, it's we fun. could we could do that again. Do the Dusty plane. Um, but she flew that quite a few times. It was a little underpowered. I, I didn't know a lot about the electric motors then, which I have one in there now that would make that thing probably go 100 miles an hour. I probably shouldn't do that with a foam board airplane, but I could make it to where it wasn't underpowered now. Yeah, if you um, go too fast, his head's going to fall off. Uh, but I have some, some really good motors now for those airplanes, and I've learned a lot since then. But, uh, yeah, she cartwheeled old Dusty. <laughs> and then we built that FT Speedster. Yeah. Um, which I don't I, think I flew that I, one. Yeah, you did, that blue one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I custom painted it all out, and I ordered you the little girl pilot that was, she was waving hello with one finger. It was really funny, and every, all the guys at the field thought it was hilarious, um, which she's still here. She's in an airplane over there. Yeah, I know where she is, now. but it, it's hard to show you, but we have a little pilot girl that I put in Lori's airplanes a lot of the time that's really funny. Um... Mm -hmm. But anyway, she did that for a little while, and then you were flying it, and the wing folded in half on it. Yeah, I literally flew the wings off. She of that she one. had been flying it really good, and she came in and had a hard landing where she hit the wing, and it cartwheeled. And we looked at it; and it looked fine, but it ended up that it was broke on the inside of the fuselage where we couldn't see it. And <laughs> she took off, and the wings went. I mean, just it was it was hilarious looking the plane. <laughs> down to the ground we had a great laugh at that so i mean we got back into it you know i can't say anything bad about the flight test planes you know they're not 
for everybody. They were a good stepping stone to get me back in and get me unrusty and start teaching Lori without having to spend an exuberant amount of money on airplanes to crash because she could go out and crash that. It's like the little pizza box plane, which you're going to see this week. Um, the FT Arrow is what it's called, the actual kit name. Um, she's flown it a ton, and those wings are just, I mean, she's nosedived it into the ground. She's hit the tent with it. She's hit the, the poles with it out at the flying field. I almost hit a tree with it. It's it trees. <laughs> it's hit all kinds of stuff, and the thing's still going. Um, you bust out the hot glue, and the way it's built, it's very strong. Um, the, she's been able to really kind of hone her skills on that without really tearing too much up because the motor's on the back of that wing. So when it does nosedive, it doesn't tear much up other than my batteries. Um, but it's worth it to see her smiling and out there flying with me, whatever it costs. It's fun. Um, and I'm glad she gets to do it with us. So anyway, it's been cool. Well, guys. Uh, Boozer has had a wonderful time tonight. He hadn't been feeling the greatest today. He's a little off his game. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. I'm excited for Toss and Boss Week. Um, next weekend, we give this little plane away in front of us. Make sure you're in the live show. The only way to win this airplane is to be in the show next weekend. Talking, hanging out. Um, and, and we're going to play a little trivia game, I think, to see who's the winner of this beautiful little plane. Um, it'll be fun. It's a thousand subscriber giveaway, so it's only fitting that you're a subscriber and you're actually watching the show to win it. So tell your buddies, tell your friends, come check out the Mary Boozers channel and see us. Lori says we have another question real quick. It's a real quick question. On the F-35... Um, after you put the gyro on, did you ever take off or did you leave it on for the rest of the flight? Um, in the video, the gyro was on the entire flight after it was turned on, I think. Um, now, last time I flew the F-35 yesterday, I flew it without the gyro the whole flight. Um, and I like it just fine without... The, the F-35 doesn't need the gyro by any means, guys. I want to get this across to everybody. You don't need the gyro in the F-35. You don't need the gyro in the F-16. They both fly great. Um, you don't need one in the L-39. Um, the only reason I have the gyros in there, and I turn them on to kind of test them out to make sure they were working correctly, for one thing, and not getting the weird wing rocks or anything else, but I have them on there because we have a lot of really crosswind days in our field. And on a crosswind landing day, it's really nice to have that gyro. Now, I flew yesterday. There wasn't a crosswind. Um, it was beautiful. I flew without the gyro the entire time. had a great time. But on those kind of 10, 15 mile an hour crosswind days, I love having a gyro. It makes your life so much easier. Because we can't land the other direction anymore. There's a school at the end of where our old runway used to be. And we don't want to be flying over top of the school. So we can't land the east-west runway anymore. So we always have to fly south-north. Um, and so when you have the crosswind days, if it's 10, 20 mile, 10, 15 miles an hour, I don't want to go home. I want to keep flying. And a gyro really helps me be able to stay out there and keep flying on those windy days. But when the wind's down the runway, I don't really use the gyros. Um, they're not really necessary for me on a lot of these airplanes. Um, I think one of the only airplanes that I'm going to suggest you have one on right from the get-go is going to be the F-104 uh, Starfighter. I think that one's going to be one I want a gyro every time I land, um, no matter what. I'm just saying from the characteristics of what an F-104 is supposed to fly like, I think that's going to be one that I'm going to just go on and land it with a gyro every time. Why not? Um, I don't think the F-18, when I flew the F-18, it didn't feel like it needed a gyro. Um, I'm not going to say it would hurt it to have one, but I don't think it needs it. Avanti definitely does not need a gyro. Um, hopefully that kind of answers your questions there. My area is bad for crosswinds. Yeah. I, uh, I always make the joke when we go out to film, I'm like, God, look, it's, it's down the runway. I don't know how to fly right now because it's not crosswind. 
I make that joke every week. If, if it's actually down the runway, because it is kind of rare, I always go out there and be like, I, don't, I can't fly today. The wind's down the runway. I don't know how. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? That's it. So That's it. All right. I'm actually going to call it. Um, I need to get my booty in bed and see if I can get myself feeling a little better. Um, I hope you all enjoy the show this week. I may go live one day randomly in the week showing you painting this airplane. Uh, if I don't enjoy the other six videos that are going up this week. Um, and we love y'all coming by. Thank y'all for all the support y'all given us. Um, I can't believe we finally made it to a thousand subscribers. It's amazing. Uh, we'll see y'all in the show next week. Same time, 8 p.m. Come get your little Toss and Boss plane. One of you guys is taking it home. Bring your Jeopardy glasses on or your Jeopardy knowledge with you because we're going to do some trivia to see who's going to win this airplane. It's not going to be boozer related. It will be airplane related trivia. So I think it'll be fun um, just to give you a heads up on what the game is. So all of you that are watching are kind of know a little bit. I can't give you any more hints on what the trivia is going to be other than it's going to be aviation related to win this airplane. So bring your thinking hats. It'll be fun. I won't make any of the questions too hard either. So we'll see what happens. It'll be fun. I, I, like I said, I'm trying some different stuff next week too, just for giggles. Anyway, guys, thank you all very much. I'm not going to start on another tangent. I'm not even going to look at the comments. Lori, don't put your hand out anymore. I'm actually done. Thank y'all for sticking with us. Um, I really hope our guest makes it next week. I'm not going to tell you who he is until I know for sure if he's coming. Um, and if I go live this week, I'll tell you at that time. If not, just be following all the, folks, the social media pages. We've got Facebook, Instagram. Um, no Twitter yet, but I'll probably set one up anyway, because why not? Um, anyway, this concludes tonight's episode of Between Two Props <laughs> and kicks off officially Toss and Boss Week. I hope y'all enjoy all the videos to come this week. Let's count it down, guys. Five, four, three. I guess it's you later is what Ryan would normally say. Two, one. Bye, guys.